welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you guys are back here. I hope you enjoyed my previous videos. And this will be an x-ray video. So basically, I already did one in the past here, a bit more basic, more beginner level. But today we're gonna talk about a bit more advanced stuff and how can you see different things on x-ray. And guys, if you like this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel. So basically, this video will have seven topics: cavities, periapical abscess, endodontic treatments, post and course, vertical root fractures, subgingival calculus, and bone loss. So let's get right into this video. So we're going to talk about radio opacity, which means it's more white, it's opaque, and radio translucency, that means that gray beans go through it and basically it's black or shades of black or shades of gray. First of all, cavities, I'm going to put here a picture. So basically we see here the upper teeth and the lower teeth a little bit. We're talking about the first and the fourth quadrant and in the first quadrant up there on the second premolar you can see we have a very deep cavity. It might not look that big but once we're going to open the tooth I do think that you will actually get to an endodontic treatment. So basically how did I know that that's a cavity? Well we can see that the enamel is very white because it's radio opaque and then we can see there inside of it, inside the enamel and the dentin is radiolucency which is like shades of black and grey, that is the carious lesion, carious process that we can see right there. So as you can see in the tooth nearby, he's healthy, he has nothing and that area there looks just fine, whitish and that's it, but this one has these black spots. Basically that's a cavity. Pretty big, mighty and low. Second picture, we see here a lot of interdental cavities. Basically in the contact point with the other teeth, there are cavities, all of the circles show you cavities. These were a little bit smaller, they will not need an endodontic treatment, you will just need to fix them of course so that they don't get bad, the more you leave them, the more bad it gets, so guys get yourself to the dentist if you have any kind of pain. Usually for example on the upper premolars, uh, whenever we have one of these cases in which on the second premolar we have a mesial one, we might have a distal one on the first premolar as well, they're usually in the mirror. Always make the x-ray before you start treatment. In in this image that you see right here, you can see that on this last smaller, it is actually tooth 1.7. Obturation that was done incorrectly, which we call in balcony, which resulted in the inflammation of the patient's thumb. So basically in mouth, when I saw this case, we couldn't see anything. Everything was very proper with the obturation, but the gum was inflamed around this tooth and we don't know why it's under there. So basically I requested an x-ray and this is when it came back. And we can see that the obturation is in balcony. So basically it makes this quick L here. Normally it should be smooth and follow the tooth line, but as you can see here is like this little L and that actually now has to be taken off and redid, put a place the matrix, place it properly under the gingiva and remake the operation. This image I put for you guys so you can see endo treatments as well. So we are talking about the tooth in the third quadrant, so basically 3-6, the first lower molar. And we can see that we have a very big cavity that penetrated and when we close, when we opened it, we reached the pulp chamber. That means we have to do an endodontic treatment. And as you can see in the other image next to it, you can see the endodontic treatment being done. As you can see, it reaches the upper. But of course, we can also have bad endo treatments, for example, like this. And as you can see, the endo treatment didn't reach the apex, and that's not good because we still have infective pulp underneath, and that will result in even worse pain. And then the patient will have to come back, and we have to do a treatment. Okay, in this case, we can see a periapical because it's around the apex of the tooth, so a periapical abscess. In this case, we are talking about the lower first molar again, but on the fourth quadrant, so basically 4.6. The abscess is rather translucent on x ray, so we can observe it here around the periapical the zone basically more actually around the mesial root of the tooth and this has to be treated of course with an endodontic treatment we have to also place a medicine there that will heal and then we can do the final, final treatment here i put an image in which you can see the steps of one of these type of cases so again here we have the first lower molar on the quadrant number four so we are talking about 4.6 and there we can see that we have periapical inflammations uh, on both roots of the tooth and then you can see that we have placed uh, medicine there, we have left it for a little bit and then we came through and making the root canal treatment and that's a follow up after two months. So you can see that the tooth looks very nice, it healed properly and now everything is fine, the patient has no more pain and we're all good. So when we talk about post and core, before we do this, we have to make sure that we have a proper endodontic treatment. On the tooth, we're gonna place one. And we always have to leave at least one third of the gutta perca, and the two thirds have to be filled with this post and core. For example, as you can see here in this image, 
we have the dental crown and we have the post and core and you can see that little piece down there that's basically the gutta perca that was left in the inside and as you can see this one is the correct one it's placed properly inside the tooth is fine the tooth is intact and everything is fine okay so but in this case the patient is 20 years old and you can see that on her first premolar she has this post and core that was not placed properly the post and core perforated the root actually on the distal side and that resulted in a lot of pain of the patient this is just two months after she had the doctor placed this and sadly now uh, our doctor told us that the patient needs to take out the tooth and put on an implant because when probably you're going to try to take out that post and core the tooth will fracture and you wouldn't be able to use it anymore you can see even the translucency of the inflammation next to the post and core where it broke the root on one side you can see that there is an inflammation there all along and even a periapical inflammation as you can observe very nicely this translucency around the periapical distal side and look at the tooth nearby or like the premolar next to it and you can see that they don't have that so basically that's a periapical inflammation okay now talking about root vertical fractures they vary widely but they may be seen on radiographs as diffuse widening of the periodontal ligament and we can also see this shape of a J around the tooth so on this x-ray you can see that bone is affected on the wood part that is affected as well because you can see here that the bone is very very retracted and you might think what maybe he has a periodontal disease but no why because then we look on the other side of the tooth and we see that there the bone is intact and it's fine and it has no problem so that problem that already shows us that we are talking and we are dealing with a fracture and also we can see that this inflammation has the shape of a J so this also shows that it's a, it might be a vertical root fracture and it actually has been in the end. So basically when we talk about a vertical root fracture, we have to check the bone level, check if both sides are the same. If they're the same, they might be periodontal problems, you never know. So you always have to also check clinically. But if on the x-ray on one side is like here, so low and on one side is totally normal, that, that for sure shows a vertical root fracture. And always look for this J shape of translucency around the root. Going to the next step, subgingival calculus. Basically, it's a radio opaque on the x-rays, but not as metal or other things, of course. But you can see like as a little bit of white here and there. So for example, in this image, wherever I circle with red, you can see that that's subgingival calculus, which has to, of course, be removed because otherwise it will just develop more and more until it will develop into a periodontal problem and then you might need periodontal treatment. Also in this image, yellow lines, you can see that interdental bone papillae are very retracted. We also call them blunt because this already shows a periodontal disease. You should always refer your patient to a specialist to investigate this case and always it looks better on uh, x-ray than it is in real life so that's why we always have to also check clinically because the radiographic image tends to underestimate the severity of this bone loss and uh, we can see appearance uh, difference between 0 to 1.6 millimeters from the x-ray to real life so always make sure you also check clinically and then here in this last image we are talking about bone loss and here you can see also a normal teeth bone, how it should look, and then bone loss on uh, the other tooth because of periodontitis. Probably in this lower second premolar, we for sure have mobility. This requires a special treatment, so you can treat it. And that's why when you see these things in your patients, if you're not already, you should refer them to a specialist. Don't forget that when you check an x-ray, to go in hand in hand, you have to also check clinically. You cannot only rely on x-ray or you cannot rely on your clinical. They both hand in hand. They always work together. So whenever you have your patient, before you start working, don't forget to take your x-rays. For example, these things with periodontal problems. If you are not doing that, don't let the patient just go home and do nothing. Send them to a specialist, make sure that they get treatment because there are so many things these days that they can do and they can save the teeth or when they cannot save them, there's even other options to do. So guys, if you like this video, don't forget to like it. And if you want to watch also the other one, go ahead and click the link right here. Comment down below if you like this video and if you want to see more. And I will see you next week. Bye guys.